Come, Holy Spirit, come now, come as you wish. Come, Holy Spirit, come now, come as you wish. Come, Holy Spirit, come now, come as you wish. As we start the new year with the first Sunday of Advent, so we conclude the liturgical year with the Feast of the Christ, the Universal King, and we are invited to reach for his kingdom. And one of the most powerful images which Jesus left for us in his ministry, it was not really by teaching. It was by his example, and then what he said was so very important. Jesus was crucified on the cross, and on both sides there were crucified other guys. A criminal who was on his right side was dying as punishment for his crimes, as a just punishment. So everybody looking there considered him, this criminal, to be a disgrace, a dishonor for the family, dishonor for the human race. And this criminal turned to Jesus at the very last moment of his life, and he said, paraphrasing the words of the gospel, do you have any room in your kingdom for a person like me? In that moment, Jesus turns to this dying sinner and he says to him, this very day, the day of your execution, in whom all people consider you to be a villain, you will be with me, with the blessed Son of God in paradise. No one in their right senses would even invent such a story. Who would even dare to do something like this? And Jesus, who is fully human, because he took our nature, and he's fully divine, he has insight into the heart of God, and only he could bring us something like this. That's the face of God for us. That's the theme for the next year of mercy, that God is a merciful Father, the one who treats us with loving kindness. And only Jesus, in his capacity, God-man, could do this, give hope and joy to all people, especially people in desperate need, when you have so-called hopeless case. So the question is to me and to you, what is your image of God? Because this is the image which Jesus engraved on the hearts of the apostles and the first disciples that they will not fail to take it to the next generations. When you look for the public ministry of Jesus, when Jesus was about 30 years old, he started to proclaim the mystery of heavenly kingdom. As, as the Gospels relate, especially uh, Matthew and Mark writing almost the same words, he went around all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the Gospel of the Kingdom. So it was a very simple message, very simple approach. And the Kingdom was presented in parables, several elements in different stories. And you can marvel, as Jesus was so clever, divine and human, why he couldn't give us one universal parable, why he has to invent so many stories. Oh, the problem is not on the side of Jesus, the problem is on our side. He could tell us plainly, he would understand nothing. Uh, and I can give you a parallel example which every family has. Uh, we don't remember our childhood but we observe others. The child, when he's growing under the heart of mommy, develops all the senses. The child, after being born, is even able to recognize the voices, recognize the people from hearing. So if you would imagine some extra modern cell phone that you can give it to the child before being born, I will prepare the child to face the challenges on the earth after the birth. And you could start with the daily activities. This is what everybody is doing every day. And child would understand nothing. Start with walking. 
you know, when you will be born, you will learn how to walk. What is walking? Unless the child is born and seeing walking people and then being jealous of the walking people, the child doesn't know what you are talking about. Or you wouldn't have to eat several times a day. Why do I have? It's an automatic system. <laughs> or when you are born, you will have to wash yourself. Wash of mess of, of what? When you will be born, you will have to dress. Whatever for. <laughs> it's exactly the same parallel, like Jesus would be able to say us one clear parable until we enter this invisible kingdom of God, we cannot understand anything of this, what he would say. That's what the stories, parallels, that we can have some kind of glimpses. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, yet when full grown, it is the largest of plants. It becomes a large bush and the birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches. How insignificant looks our baptism? And this is the planting of the kingdom of God in every body of us. And it will grow, it will develop. And as Jesus said in another parable, the kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. So this tiny step accepting Jesus in the sacrament of baptism will transform the whole personality by the grace if we allow God to operate in us. Jesus also said, this is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is if a man were to scatter seed on the land and would sleep and rise night and day and the seed would sprout and grow, he knows not how. Of its own accord, the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear, and when the grain is ripe, he wills his sickle at once, for the harvest has come. So if we allow God to operate in our lives, we will bring harvest, we will produce the fruits of salvation. So there is no way, there is no way to buy or even deserve participation in the kingdom of God. That's absolutely clear from Jesus' teaching. The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. So it's some kind of celebration. And the good news is all are invited. But it's still a gift. We can just respond to the invitation. And as we know about Jesus, who was known for being the merciful, especially the poor, disadvantaged people, they have privileges for the entrance in the heavenly kingdom. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went at the dawn uh, to hire laborers for his vineyard. And we know from this parable that uh, Jesus, this troublemaker, if he would reverse it, there would be no trouble. He started to pay the people who worked only one hour. The others were working the whole day. And those who were working for one hour and not the whole day, they received exactly the same payment like those who are working the whole day. If this parable doesn't irritate you, you might need some professional help. <laughs> it is a gift of the goodness of the owner of the vineyard. He is giving from his own property and he rewards according to his goodness, disregarding time of work or burden of the day, and he still manages to be just. Merciful and just, the mystery which is really beyond our understanding. When the king came in to meet the guest, he saw a man there not dressed in a wedding garment. He said to him, my friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? If you have never read or listened to the book, The Song of Bernadette, it's a wonderful book, I'm listening again for it, and there's a beautiful explanation for this parable of Jesus. When they were challenging this little Bernadette, who is the sinner? And she answered in the, her simplicity of a child, the sinner is the one who loves evil. She didn't say the sinner is the one who does evil. The one who loves evil. 
And if you love evil, you have no wedding garment. You have no life of grace. So there is a mystery of good and bad people who will be separated at the end of time. And guard yourself from loving evil. The kingdom is a gift but demands an answer. This crucified criminal at the right side of Jesus, he had to do something. He admitted in his confession that he was justly crucified, so he repented what he has done wrong, and he turned to Jesus. Oh, the mercy is available to anyone, but would you turn, would you change your life to receive the mercy? That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants when he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. So the criminal was forgiven all his debt. If he would resist, if he would refuse to forgive other people, all the gift would be taken away. As Jesus said in this parable, so will my heavenly Father do to you unless each of you forgives his brother from his heart. So our forgiveness depends on forgiving others. It will be as when a man who was going on the journey called in his servants and entrusted his possession to them. The one who had received five talents came forward bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. The two, two more. And the one who received one, he did nothing. He received a great gift of God, smaller than the others. And then when he refused to cooperate with the grace, it was very harsh. Because the one who was working, his master said to him, well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you are faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. The highest uh, image in Israel to be dining at the table of the king, the, the highest honor they, they were presenting always. And from this useless servant who didn't do anything, who didn't cooperate with the grace, into the darkness outside where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. So the total frustration, wailing and grinding of teeth. There is a need to be watchful and being prepared because the kingdom is a mysterious kingdom and you cannot miss the time of visitation. That's our words of Jesus. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. So it's within our grasp, very close to us. Guard your loins and light your lamps and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. So we get the blessing if we do our duty, even if this visitation of God would be taken us by surprise. The coming of the kingdom of God cannot be observed and no one will announce, look, here it is, or there it is. For the behold, the kingdom of God is among you. It's within, among you, within your grasp, in you, whichever translation you like, all of them fit to this. So it's something invisible, but we have already connection to it, especially through the sacraments. So the kingdom of God is somehow present in the world today in the church, in the sacrament, in the prayer, in the spiritual relationship with God. Being connected to the king, we are connected to his kingdom. So the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Saint Jerome, the father of the church, the doctor of the church, he was saying that this treasure hidden in the field is Jesus himself. You find Jesus, you trade anything not to lose him. And this is a true a proof for us if you really met Jesus. You will not trade him for anything else. So we are expected to make a decision. 
And it's up to us. You want to share or you refuse the mercy of God. Because the kingdom is absolutely and totally new, the most important thing is to do this. Jesus said in one sentence, the most important is to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given you besides. So if you put God first, everything falls into the right spot, and the blessing of God is providing for our needs. So if you take a summary of this teaching, the incarnated love of God, Jesus, is among us and in us, especially through the sacraments. So Jesus has already entered human history. If the people like it or they don't like it, he became human at the incarnation. And through the passion, death on the cross, and then the miracle of the resurrection, he proved his divinity. So he entered into the human history. He brought us salvation. But it is impossible to define this kingdom of heaven in human definition, in human perception. We are like missing dimensions to embrace it, really to explain it. Coming back uh, to this story about this criminal who turned to Jesus in his longing, in his uh, desire to be saved. Now, who would even presume you will be with me, the blessed Son of God, in paradise today? Who would even presume that this man who was crucified at the right side of Jesus, he will be the first one to the heavenly kingdom? Can you imagine your home situation? Your child is coming home, you see through the window and dragging new friend, and you just look at this friend, you know, and can't you afford someone better? Uh, this could be the situation we've got the father, you know, seeing Jesus coming to his heavenly kingdom with this hopeless guy, you know, can't you afford anyone better than him? What would Jesus answer? Be ready, there are more like him. So there is always hope in this situation. He left us this that we memorize. And if the apostles would not pass it, that would really face. But be ready and be prepared that the, everyone who desires to come closer to the kingdom of God must be open to the mystery. It's beyond our understanding. It's beyond our explanation. But it's sure because it was promised by the only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior.